The World Cybercrime Index identifies the world's key cybercrime hotspots. It measures the significance of the cybercrime produced in different countries and then ranks those countries according to the impact of the cybercrimes produced there and the skills of the cybercriminals who commit these crimes. My colleagues and I designed the index during a partnership between the University of New South Wales and the University of Oxford. And it's now a part of the CRINGOV project, which studies organized crime at a global scale. So up till now, we've been able to collect lots of data on victims of cybercrime, the types of attacks that occur, and the underground marketplaces that cybercriminals operate in. But our understanding of where cybercriminal activity is actually coming from has been a major blind spot for everyone except the experts. And this is part of the reason why we started this project and why we created the index. We wanted to help lift the veil of anonymity around cybercrime by mapping it. The index has three main findings. First, there are more cybercrime hotspots than is typically reported in the media. In our study, 97 different countries were nominated as significant sources of cybercrime. Second, these hotspots are not equally distributed across the globe. Cybercriminal activity is strongly concentrated in some regions and much weaker in others. We found that China, Russia, Ukraine, the US, Romania, and Nigeria are the most significant producers of cybercrime. And third, countries tend to specialize in certain types of cybercrime. In other words, if you're a cyber criminal, the country that you're in will probably have a significant influence on the kind of cybercrime you're likely to commit. So the overall finding of the index is that cybercrime actually has a strong geographical dimension. Because what they do is illegal and largely anonymous, it's very difficult to study cyber criminals themselves. They're actively hiding. So the best method we have to map where offenders are located is to survey the people whose job it is to actually track down and find cyber criminals. So we asked 92 of the world's leading experts in cybercrime intelligence and investigations to nominate the countries they consider to be the most significant sources of cybercrime. We broke down cybercrime into five major categories. Between them, discovers everything from botnets and identity theft to cyber attacks and ransomware. Then we asked the experts to nominate the top countries associated with each of these cybercrime types. Then they rated every single one of those countries according to the professionalism and technical skill of its offenders and the impact of cybercrimes produced there. When we combine these ratings, each country gets an overall score as well as a score for each type of cybercrime. Thinking about cybercrime as a highly localized and geographically specific will have a major impact on policy discussions. First, public and private sectors can now concentrate their resources on these hotspots and spend less time and funds on cybercrime countermeasures in countries where the problem might be limited. Second, the index shows that the top cybercrime hotspots around the world are actually very diverse in terms of their geography, economics, and politics. What this means is that the likelihood that a single anti-cybercrime strategy will work in all countries is quite low. If cybercrime is driven by local factors, then fighting it will probably require a localized approach. And finally, the index gives us a way to track the level of cybercriminality across countries. So over the years, we'll be able to see whether country scores are improving or getting worse, which means we should be able to track whether anti-cybercrime measures are working within a particular country. And if we continue the survey for long enough, we might even be able to predict where new cybercrime hubs will emerge.